So this is showing the max pain levels for Bitcoin, which is essentially the current max pain level given if everyone, the price that everyone bought at. Okay. So, you know, once you dip below this level, this is like when people start having the average price is a loss. Okay. And we've come very close to it a few times, but you can see right now uh, where everyone's buying at, it's kind of, you know, it's all the way down to like 13 or 16 K right now. So we're slightly above it, but it's something to keep an eye on. Um, so this is more like the average price of um, current people trading it. This is the same thing. This is just showing the same thing. The current, um, the balance price and CVDD floor price given, um, you know, where people have bought at and we're getting very close to where people would be at a loss. And I think once we dip below this, you could see some heavy sell. It's really, I think it's like 16 K or 17 K or something like that, but it's like a good three K of wonder where we're at right now. Um, this is the same thing. Okay. This uh, Bitcoin MVT ratio is the network value to transaction ratio. So this, I'll just go ahead and show you at the bottom here so you can all read along. When it's high, in case of its network valuation is outstripping the value being transmitted on its payment network. Okay, so this, uh, when the network is in high growth and investors are valuing it as high return investment or alternatively when the price is in an unsustainable bubble. Okay, so you take the network value, um, let's see, note this equivalent is the Bitcoin token supply divided by the daily Bitcoin value transmitted through the blockchain. Okay, so it's an inverse monetary velocity. Essentially what you need to know is that if it is at the bottom bands here, I should, I should do it like this. If it's at the bottom of the bands, it's usually a good area to buy. If it's at the top, it's usually a good area to sell historically. Okay. So, yeah, let me, um, let me try to zoom in here. Yeah. So we can see that, yeah, anytime it's kind of gone up to the top, generally a good sign to that we're going to see some downside soon, right? So that's what happened here. When we got to the top of this range right here at, what was this? 46, something like that. You know, we did have some kind of downside briefly as this thing reset all the way down to the bottom before we had some upside. So generally when it gets up pretty high on this, you should see some downside and we're pretty much at the top of it right now. Um, this is just showing the volume profile for the current key ranges for Bitcoin. I actually really like this site a lot, uh, Whale Map. Whale Map is, a, is another charting platform it can be helpful. There's quite a few of them, you know, that now show aggregated data, like book map, um, TRDR, trading light. Um, the latest one, well, it's not really that. It's kind of been around for a year or two is whale map. And whale map is nice because it's, you know, they do give you a lot of free data on here, but it's also pretty simple looking. It's really easy to just understand. And they tweet out a lot of their pictures um, that are also very easy to understand. So they put out this picture yesterday and I'll show you the website next, but um, these are like the key levels uh, that they have. It's 13.7 and 16.2. So it's whalemap.io, uh, Rico. All the links are actually in the resources page. Resources Discord. So let me uh, move this over so we can see it a little bit better. Make sure you guys can. See. So this is webmap.io. All right. So there's some there's some pretty good um, resources on here, but they have and it's a large wallet inflows. Um, you can see if you really zoom in. Actually, this one you're gonna really need the paid for, but. Um, you can see like when um, these bubbles are based on um, when you have a lot of money flowing into buying Bitcoin. 
And it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to go up though, right? Because you do have this up at the top. It's more of these other ones like this volume profile one, which I think is kind of helpful. So this volume profile one, the way it works is so if we go to the hour up at the top left up here, okay? And then you use this uh, scroll wheel. There's actually a scroll wheel. Let me turn this off. Okay. There's a scroll wheel right here. Okay. So you can actually drag this to the left and right and see how the volume profile has changed given over time, right? So let's go back to the day and so we can see the volume profile over here on the right side as we scroll left to right. Okay. So this is the current price right now. And you can see that there's obviously a lot of buys at 16.6, which is fairly close to our current price. But as you, as we go back, when we're going down, you can see that, you know, where a lot of people are putting their orders in, um, and where the volume is kind of increasing and decreasing below. Right. So when we were up here at the very top, right here, when we were way up here, you could see that people were really accumulating their buy orders down here at 19 K. They were expecting a drop, right? Even when we were up here at like 20 K right before this huge drop down. So when we were way up here at two zero five, people were really accumulating down here at this uh, 19 area right here. So I'll go ahead and show that again, right? So, so look at 19 K like right now, right? We're at the very bottom of this. Okay, I'm on the daily. So we're at 19 K right now. This is 19 K right here. Okay. Now watch as we go up. See how the 19 K is, is decreasing, right? But once we got to the very top here, people started to think, okay, maybe we're coming down and 19 K started to go up a little bit more. Okay. Then as we kept going, as we got to up here, 19 K started to increase just a little bit more. People knew we were going down, right? But when we're down here, 19 K is a lot, right? Cause that's very close to the current price. But up here, we don't have that kind of support right underneath the price, right? Usually when you're, you know, just normally trading, you have a lot of support under the current price, wherever it's at, right? So here, for example, you know, we're at whatever this is, we have a lot of support under the current price because people are trying to, you know, trade it. They're trying to buy, sell it, you know, near the current price, right? When you get to the very top up here, right? Look at this. There's no real, there's not much volume under the current price, right? Very minimal. A lot of people's buy orders are still way down here. You know, way down here, even though we're at the very top up here. So hopefully that makes sense. So as we've kind of come down um, in the beginning of November, you know, we've kind of come along and here it looks like 16.6. There was some decent volume under this current area, which we filled, but really not much. Now, where are we right now? So it looks like a lot of people are kind of stacking money at 16.6. Which is more or less, you know, actually this was, this was made two days ago or yesterday. That one's a little bit outdated now in the, in the terms of technology. Now if we go to the hourly, cause that was on the daily, right? Let's go to the hourly and let's, let's look. So current price 16.7. So as we go back, let's, let's go up to the very top, right? So here, I'll, maybe I can show a little bit better what I mean here. So when price is down at the bottom, right? We have a lot of support right under wherever the current price is. It should be like that, right? People are trying to get in. They're putting, you know, buy orders in at the current price, right? And as we go up, you see how this increases wherever the price is going up, right? Because people are putting in buy orders right at the current price and right below current price, right? So you can see on the right side, price is going up whenever we go up, okay? Volume's going up um, at the current price, right? But then when we get to this kind of topish area, there's really not much volume under the current price, right? Not like compared to down here, right? If you compare this bar right here, this like, what is this? Or this is 17.1 right here. Or this like 17.3 whatever. Compare that to like this one up here. There's just no volume under this current price to support it. All the volume is still way down here. So where are we at right now? Well, it looks like most of our volume is still down here. What is this? Or 
wish I could see what this was. Oh, looks like a lot of volume at $400, by the way. $400. <laughs> well, that's almost $0. <laughs> Oh, what is this? 16.5? Yeah, 16.3, 16.5, somewhere in here. Which makes sense, because if we look at our chart, I mean, you can kind of, you know, you don't need all the fancy stuff to tell you where the where the money's at right now. You know, it, it's how, it's how we predicted this bottom right here. Right? And it's how we predicted this bounce right here. Okay? We we knew that the, the bottom was going to be here at this POC, because that was the area of the major volume. Right? You don't need all that fancy stuff. You don't need six consoles and everything, right? You guys could see how I was doing this every day last week. Um, finding these levels for you. And how, you know, if you just keep it very simple, you can find, you know, these levels. It doesn't take a magician, right? So I drawn a volume profile for this current range. Like way, way back here on like early November. And, you know, we had this POC right here at 16.5. This is the area of major volume. And that's obviously why we dropped and then bounced right there at 16.5, right? Um, we saw that our we had a POC up here at the prior range. Something like this, right? Okay, at 16, this was 17k one. But we also had one at like 16, uh, what was it, 16, 5, 16, 7, right? We had one at 16, 7 as well. Uh, we had some decent volume there, and that's why we had a temporary bounce at 16, 7 first, then 16, 5. So, you know, where's our next areas of... You know, volume. Well, it's going to be at the bottom of this range over here where our value area low is. So, 16.2. Okay. So, you can genuinely see, you know, predicting where things, you know, if things are going to go up or down is impossible. Okay. If people are telling you that, you know, this coin is going to be 500K by, you know, the third March or third day of March when the cherry blossoms open and, you know, I don't know, Osaka. Don't believe them. Unless they're talking about waves, right? But don't believe them, okay? Because, <laughs> yeah, it's just so crazy for me to even think about, but you can't believe that, right? However, we can tell where things would be going next, right? So volume can, can rapidly change any time in crypto. We can see, you know, we can see where things are going to go next. We don't know when and where, right? We can see the key levels. We can see the key levels of the bottoms and the tops. Now, if we enter at the key tops and bottoms, then we don't care about where the price is going. We don't care about, you know, like if it's going to be, you know, going sideways up or down, right? Because if you enter like right here or you enter right here, then you don't care about, you know, trying to decipher is this going up, down, up, down, up, down, right? You're not losing your mind watching this every day because... You no, know, you entered like way down here. You entered way down here. You're just chilling. So these these levels that we find are important. Because that's where you should be entering at, right? So, you know, I was saying 16.5 was a very key level. This is POC. And, and, you know, now it's very obvious to anyone who's looking at it, right? But um, this is why you do the preparation beforehand. Because if you entered here, you would have wicked in, Right? And you're not sitting there losing your mind watching this. Okay. Maybe you take profits up here to resistance. And you just move your stop loss. Your stop loss is sitting like right here. Okay. And you're just chilling. You know. Watching football. Watching a movie. Watching the new Avatar movie. Getting motion sickness. Whatever it is. You know. Pretty, pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. That's all there is to trading. You're entering at the bottoms and the tops. And then we take profits, set stop losses, and then we go get smoothies. And we can go for a smoothie now. I wish I wouldn't have brought that up. All right. So what's happening next? Well, we had a, a strong break in structure here to the downside. You know, we started making some lower highs, lower lows. If you wanted to be bullish about this, we would really hope to keep a, you know, a higher low. Relative to the 16.7. Maybe the 16.6. But, you know, it made a lower low. If you're really going to say this is bullish compared to this over here. This low, I mean, good luck, right? I don't I don't really see it. And if we were going to be bullish, I think I would expect some upside first. But we're not really getting any upside here, right? Instead, we're just forming another 
kind of rising wedge here to the downside like this right i mean that's exactly what it looks like right right so in this case maybe we get a retest like this right we come up um you know we do make a higher high because sometimes that happens you know a rising wedge and wow i drew that way too high actually let me fix that so maybe we come up a we could we could stop here at this resistance again at 16.8 that's a great area to short okay and then we come back down we're making a lower high here and then we break structure we come down to this support um and we're holding for like an sfp here but then we break it right and we just come back down form a higher low first right because you have to form a higher low before you make a lower low come up make a higher low and then do something similar and eventually just break to the downside right that's one possibility okay that's just one possibility of general structure the other thing is we could come up and make a higher um higher high but that doesn't mean that it's bullish right i could probably draw these a little more accurate I change music so we could come up and make a higher high we definitely could but that doesn't necessarily imply that we're you know bullish right because we're still in this kind of rising wedge consolidation um, pattern happening here so what i would be doing is if you're really looking to get in the key level that you don't want to break is this you don't want to be breaking 19 sorry 16 9 okay if you're breaking 16 9 you're making a higher high on the local time frame on the short time frame right so i would be looking for shorts in this area if you're not already in a trade i would be looking for shorts in this area right here okay at a lower high between you know we have a daily right here at 16.9 up to the top up here at 16.94 uh which is near our poc over here from our previous range but i would be looking for shorts up in this area um, the other possible short would be right here at 16.85. All right. This doesn't look bullish at all. Not in any sense of the word, right? You'd think after all this downside, you'd have some relief, which is why, you know, I was really peddling longs back here. Because anytime you have this much downside, you want to be looking for longs, right? That's why we said the long down here. That's why we said the long over here too. At these potential, you know, areas where we had all this downside, right? So, same thing, okay? So, I'd be looking for shorts up here at 16.9. Yeah, somewhere in this range. I mean, you can even try this daily pivot before that, 16.85, which I might even do one there, but low leverage. Um, if my stop loss gets hit. Because remember, I'm in a long from, from 16.5. I got in on this at 16.588. So my order was like right here. I longed from right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the key levels down below. Oh, nice song. Key levels down below. We kind of talked about it with the whale map. But it said 16.2 was a fairly strong level there. Yeah, 16.2 was a fairly strong level. And if we look at that down here we can see that uh, that's our value area low down here so these are the curious to buy at so i'll go and mark them for everyone okay all right so so this is the a uh, long get let me move this box right here so let me let me bring that one back I'll just change it All right, so this is kind of how I see it. All right, and that makes sense to everyone.
I got so many stupid box on here. I'm gonna get rid of. All right, I'll post this in the uh, Discord as well. Why is this non-existent? All right, cool. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats. Most people finish early, but you made it the full distance. That's awesome. If you're looking to learn how to trade crypto, check out one of these other videos.